Welcome to Cape Chronicle. I'm Alex Gasser. Kendra Eads, the Executive Director of the Southeast Missouri Network Against Sexual Violence, or CIMO NASB. Um, I also work for CIMO NASB as the Development Director. Kendra, thank you so much for being here today. You're so welcome. I'd do anything <laughs> for you. <laughs> awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about what CIMO NASB is and, and what they do in the area? Sure. Uh, CIMO NASB is a child advocacy center as well as a rape crisis center. And that basically just means that we provide services to any age of survivor of sexual violence, as well as children who've been physically abused. We serve eight counties in Southeast Missouri. We provide forensic interviews and medical exams in conjunction with law enforcement on our child cases, uh, children's division, the juvenile office, prosecutors, those part of our multidisciplinary team. And then we also provide follow-up services like advocacy and counseling to help the families uh, get through the process. Additionally, we have a prevention program called the Green Bear Project that goes into schools around the area, um, pre-K through 12th grade, and talks with children about ways to stay safe, um, teaches them personal body safety techniques, and we also do training with adults for mandated reporting and just concerned citizens on how to keep kids safe from abuse. Awesome. So how long has uh, CIMO NASB been around? Um, seems like you guys are, we do a lot of different things in the community. Yep, um, we actually just celebrated our 25th anniversary last year. Um, I've been involved with the agency um, for 19 of those years. Um, I did my undergraduate internship at CIMO NASB back in 2004 and have done a lot of different jobs at the agency. Um, but 25 years is um, the timeline from when we got started. It was just a group of community people who came together who wanted to improve the response for victims in our community. And um, we've been through a lot of ups and downs, but um, we've grown tremendously just in the last few years. And uh, we're doing really well. I think we'll be here for another 25, if not longer. <clears throat> Gotcha. That's kind of a double-edged sword, right? <laughs> that we're here to provide the services, but we would rather be out of business if, if possible. Absolutely. I say that all the time. I would love it if we could close our doors tomorrow because nobody else was being sexually assaulted. Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in right now. So what is the process for, say, someone that sees some type of uh, abuse and what do they do? What, what, you know, what's, what's their process? Sure, um, you know, law enforcement is always available if somebody wants to make a police report at their local law enforcement agency. Additionally, uh, calling the Missouri Child Abuse Hotline is really important. Um, and all you need to do that is reason to suspect. That's what the law says. You don't have to investigate yourself. You don't have to find out if it's true or not. If you have concerns about a child, it's okay to call that hotline or make a report to law enforcement. So you mentioned um, the prevention education program, Green Bear. Where did that come from? <laughs> Green Bear has a, has a, a very sad um, but hopeful um, origin story. Lisa Stone is the founder of Green, the Green Bear Project and she was a foster parent for years. She's also a pediatric nurse. And um, there was a child in her care uh, back in the early 2000s named Tylen or Baby Ty. And uh, he was with Lisa for I think six or so months of his very short life. And when he was returned to his parents, um, the abuse that they put upon him caused his death. And Lisa was so despondent and so upset um, to have lost him that she had to find some way to channel her pain uh, about what happened to baby Ty. And that sort of was the brainchild of, you know, what can we do to help keep kids safe? And it's called the Green Bear Project because Ty had a little stuffed green bear when he was at Lisa's house that was his comfort. And she wants to bring comfort to children as well and hopefully prevent them from going through something he went through. Gotcha. And um, is that, that program, the age range of, of that program, we just expanded into the high school this mm -hmm. past fall. So we're pre-K through 12th grade, is that correct? Yep. Awesome. Um, and then you mentioned the mandator reporter classes. Um, is there, a, how do people get involved in those or are there parenting classes yeah. for? Absolutely, so greenbearmo.org is our uh, website for the Green Bear Project and we always have information there for mandated reporters, for parents, concerned citizens, people in the community. Um, we do, all of our services are free, whether they're the direct services to survivors or the prevention services, but um, somebody can schedule a class anytime they want to. We're offering a series of classes right now for mandated reporters on CMOS campus and there's information about that um, on greenbearmo.org. Um, you mentioned that the services are free, so counseling, how, how does that work 
if someone was interested in receiving counseling? Sure. Um, the majority of the people we see for counseling have come through our forensic services and they get their referrals that way. But we also can see uh, children or adults that didn't come through our center if they have a sexual violence history. Obviously with the children as mandated reporters, we need to make sure that that case has been investigated. But for adults, there is no requirement to report. So it could be something that happened when they were a child. It could be something that's happened recently. Um, whatever the issue is, they can self-refer to Simo Nasby for counseling. And again, those services are free. Awesome. Um, and I know there's some, some big news um, <laughs> that we just received recently, and you want to go into a little sure, bit about that? <laughs> sure. Uh, we found out on Monday that we received a renewal um, on our Office on Violence Against Women rural grant from the Department of Justice for $750,000 for two years. We are very excited. <laughs> So how is um, CMO NASV primarily funded if all of our services are free? Wonderful that we received this grant, but you know, monies can only go so far. Yep. Well, that's where you come in um, <laughs> as our development director. Uh, no, we do, we do um, rely on grants quite a bit. Um, we have federal grants, state grants, local government uh, grants, businesses. Uh, we've expanded a lot into the private foundation business world since you've joined us. Um, and we like we need personal donations as well. We are trying to help people understand that we are a community resource that is there for you if you need us, but we have to have the funding to, to stay open. We do um, a little bit of billing for the medical exams that we provide. Um, that's to the state of Missouri, never to the client. And uh, we have a pretty diverse funding situation. Um, but like I said, bringing you on a couple years ago has really expanded the opportunities that we've had and allowed us to get out in the community more so more people know who we are. So if someone wanted to get involved, how, how would they get involved in CMO NASV? Yeah, anybody um, obviously can make a donation on our website, cmonasv.org slash donate. Um, if they'd like to be a volunteer, there's also information about that on the website. If they're over 18 and can pass a criminal background check, um, we'll do an interview with them and figure out exactly where to plug them in. But we always need support uh, in volunteers and we're happy to have them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today and sharing about CMO Nesby and all that we do here in, in Southeast Missouri. And um, I know it's been a pleasure working with you <laughs> and um, kind of growing with the agency because we've seen a lot of growth in the last few years, actually. Yeah. So. It's exciting. Thank yeah. you for having me. <laughs> no problem.